Hey everyone, we have some exciting news. Team Ranson are starting a vlog. And my new train has arrived. Roll the intro. It's become established now. It's the weekend tradition. The long run. Elevation, distance. You need to consider all of it. You want it to be a challenge, you want it to be hard, but you also want it to be achievable. So we start in the same place we always do. Get the map, look for a line, check the contours, make sure it matches up, make sure it delivers what you're looking for. But did you ever ask yourself, why is it that they're so good? It's because they are so good. Every year seven class starts with, what is an ordnance survey map? Every examination specification have come across has them part of it. Even when we worked in China, they were part of it. But you see, there's a problem with that. If we just introduce something, zero context, just bring it up and go, hey, this is great. What we're doing, whether we realize it or not, is promoting this idea of exceptionalism. So exceptionalism is this idea that there's a group that can do something that no one else can. They're somehow inherently better than any other group, perhaps because of the country that they're from or the period of time that they're in, but inherently we're putting forwards the idea that no one else can achieve or reach the goals and heights that that exceptional group was able to do. So the story of the Ordnance Survey kicks off in 1745 with the Jacobite uprising in Scotland. See, Charles Stuart wants to replace King George II with his father, and they've chosen a time when the British army is busy, it's tied up fighting in Europe. They march south, enjoy some early successes, but it doesn't last. That anticipated English support never materializes, and not a single one of the promised French troops ever sets foot on British soil. They're left with no choice but to retreat, and as they do so, they're caught and crushed at the Battle of Culloden. The survivors of that uprising scatter to the highlands. King George II isn't satisfied. He wants them caught, he wants them dealt with. A lieutenant colonel proposes mapping those highlands in 1747. You see, it's much easier to evade an enemy if you know the terrain and they don't. Now that lieutenant colonel was put in charge, but he's not really the mapping type. So most of the work fell to William Roy. William Roy the cartographer? William Roy the cartographer. So William Roy was actually a Scottish engineer with an interest in cartography and a background in land surveying. Roy's map of Scotland is an excellent piece of cartography. You can actually see it in the British Museum today. So when King George II felt the Jacobites were no longer a threat, his attentions turned to France. Would they invade? William Roy, now Surveyor General, was commissioned to map the south coast of England, answering King George II's question, where should we put our cannons? Where should we put our ordnance? I used to think the word ordnance meant something to do with order or organisation, but it actually means mounted guns. There used to be a board of ordnance that supplied weapons to the army and navy, and it was that board of ordnance that commissioned the ordnance survey. You okay? Yeah. Okay. So, we're here for this. This is a triangulation pillar, which so you'll probably know they only put on the top of high points. So these are dotted all over the country. William Roy's ambition was to create the most accurate map of the UK that had ever existed. And it was that map series that the Board of Ordnance commissioned and led to the Ordnance Survey. You can see it's massive. It would have had this huge theodolite put down on top of it. That theodolite was only invented by Jesse Ramsden like four years before they started. It would have lined it up with another triangulation pillar and stood here and taken 128 measurements to make sure you got it right. 
See, they only had to measure one distance to begin with, and then they could work the rest of it out just by trigonometry. That triangulation gives them their name, triangulation pillars. Right, I'll race you down. Now, no one's going to dispute that Ramsden's theodolite made the difference. It's what allowed the primary triangulation to happen. But the theodolite wasn't an entirely new idea. The gromers and diopters that had been used earlier set the tone, they set the way. And we can trace them back to the Islamic golden age of science. And... Uh, that way, yeah. So we can trace those back to the golden age of Islamic science. And we can trace the ideas that they were dealing with of longitude and latitude even earlier. Back to Eratosthenes and Ptolemy trying to work it out in ancient Greece and ancient Egypt. So, less of a revolution, more of an evolution in terms of mapping quality. So I guess we have some options then about what we're going to do in terms of using Ordnance Survey maps and how we introduce them. We have the idea that we could just introduce them with no context and say, hey, these are exceptional. And we can call that option one. Or we could try option two and suggest that context matters. And to do that, we could say something about how they came about. We could talk about the principal triangulation of Britain. And honestly, I think this is an amazing activity to repeat. I think getting protractors out and actually going and measuring it is one of the most satisfying ways to spend a Friday afternoon. We can name drop some of the heroes involved in it. There's nothing to stop us from calling out William Roy and saying what he did, or mentioning that the theodolite that Jesse Ramsden invented was integral to it. And if you really wanted to offer context, you'd point out that this improvement in cartography it's been going on for 2,000 years now as we've progressively tried to improve the quality of the way that we show the world. Now, Ordnance Survey maps are great, but they reflect all of the effort of everyone that went before them. So, first vlog done, first vlog in the bag. And it might have looked like a single seamless take and edit, but in fact, that took like three weeks of going back to the same place and running it time and time again. I don't know if you can hear the dog in the background there. He's found a really good stick. Just decided he wanted to contribute his voice to this little outro bit. So, I've been wanting to be a filmmaker for like 10 years now. Maybe, maybe 15 years. Um, it's taken a long time. It's taken a long time until the equipment got cheap enough and we had platforms like YouTube where it was possible to do it. And I guess I grew confident enough that it was actually just worth going, <gasps> yeah, why, why not? Now, I've got some aspirations, some things I'd like to do, because, you know, we all have a role that we can play. We can all be a voice for change and affect the kinds of changes that we want to see through the ways that we act and the sorts of things that we do. So this is a space that I'm going to start occupying. And I'm going to see if we can just nudge the dial a little bit in the directions that I think it ought to turn. Ooh, helicopters.